Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn Cards video. Right here you can see my Quick Cut Silhouette uh, Digital Craft Cutter cutting out um, an image from Christina Werner's Spring Flowers digital Designer Cut Set um, that you can get at two peas in a bucket and the flowers are really pretty. And then right now we're going to go back to working on the card. Um, this is a five and a half by four and a quarter card base and that is Spring Moss Paper Tray Ink cardstock. Um, I really like this cardstock. It's super thick. Um, it's just really sturdy. You can see it just like barely bends. It's it's just really nice. When you make a card on it, it just seems sort of ritzier or something like that because it's so thick. And then this piece is ripe avocado um, and it's five and a half by two inches. And those are kind of be my main elements on the page. And um, right now I'm going to get to uh, stamping on this ripe avocado piece. I'm just putting down a piece of scratch paper, which is a 40% off Michael's coupon I printed but never used. Um, and then I'm getting out uh, Background Basics Textile from Paper Trank, which is new. Um, it's really cool. It has kind of like a magazine type text, like a scripted one, and then this one that kind of looks old world, like someone did it with an inkwell, with one of those crazy fancy feather pens they used to use. Um, and uh, so anyways, I, um, I'm going to use that one because I think it's fun and it's kind of cool to think I might have actually drawn that out with a feather pen or something. <laughs> so um, right now I'm just getting out the thing and I'm going to lay that, that stamp down on the thing and then pick it up with my acrylic block that way because then it's straight. If you try to attach it to the acrylic block, sometimes it can be a little curved and then you can tell with with fonts and, and typing and that type, you know, typeset type stuff, you can tell when it's crooked. So I'm bringing the Versamark um, to to the ink, uh, the ink pad, excuse me, to the stamp, because sometimes it's just easier. And, um, and I'm going to be clear embossing um, on this cardstock. Right now I'm going to stamp it kind of off the edge, because um, I want it to look like I kind of ripped this piece or cut this piece out of like an already existing, you know, full page. So um, I want, kind of want that, that look that it's just coming off of the page. And um, so I'm just going to keep stamping Versamark um, and lining them up. Now, right now I have this empty space on the side as you can see so I just went through and lifted up and there's some overlap but I think that actually looks really cool once you heat emboss it. Um, it kind of looks like the, maybe the ink came out a little bit more um, from the inkwell like on, out of the pen tip. I don't know. I think it looks kind of neat. So I wasn't too worried about getting that that perfectly covered. Plus the, the font is so small that it would just be so hard to try to get it perfect. So there's my clear embossing powder that I keep in that Tupperware. And I'm just heat embossing as you can see which is you know as you guys know like my most favorite thing to watch ever. Um, so I'm just heat embossing that one side and I'm gonna um, get it from the back to stop the warping and then um, turn it turn it to the other side and then heat emboss the other side so I don't burn my fingers. Um, and now the whole thing just has that really cool raised look and you can see there on the right side that darker part that kind of looks like ink might have spilled a little. I like that look. Right here is the piece that came out of my um, silhouette craft cutter um, and I'm just pulling off its raspberry fizz paper tray and cardstock and I'm just pulling off uh, the flowers now. You can see how pretty it is and how cool it looks, even the negative image. You could use it for something like a mask. I think I saw Christina Werner do that. Um, so these are my two flowers that I got from my craft cutter. And I want to use the same, um, ink, I'm going to call it inkwell font from now on, um, with a raspberry fizz ink. So it's like this tone on tone look. It's, it's really subtle, but it ends up uh, just giving it a little bit of extra texture and it kind of ties the flower into that uh, ripe avocado piece. So I'm just stamping over both of them because I'm lazy and it just seems faster that, to do it that way and uses less ink. So I'm just going to be stamping all the way down. And uh, as you can see, I just fast forwarded a bit and I'm just stamping my last little bit on that bigger flower. I think the flowers are one, one's two inch and one is one and a half inches, something like that. Or one's two and a half and one's two inches, that's what it is. So here's my uh, ripe avocado piece. I'm just going to use um, that ATG gun, um, uh, you know, tape transfer gun um, to tape it down. I love this tape. Um, it's cheap and it's super strong, so I like it. And uh, I'm just putting it down there, just lining up the edges on my spring moss piece. And um, I really like these two colors together. Um, if you guys do um, Don McVeigh's uh, color challenges, you might recognize these ones. Um, it was from her color challenge this week. So anyways, now I'm sticking down. Um, a lot of people call this sticky strip or tacky tape, or it's got about a million names. But I'm laying a strip down, just slightly covering 
um, the ripe avocado piece and, and onto the, the spring moss piece. And I'm actually going to use this to adhere my ribbon um, because I felt like it needed some kind of transition between the two pieces. It looked kind of unfinished. So I'm just adhering the ribbon to that tape and it won't come off. Um, so you have to make sure it's really straight. Um, and this one ended up a little bit crooked so I kind of had to push the ribbon around. But, um, but you know, it, it ends up okay once you put the flower there and we do the whole card, it'll be fine. And then what I do is instead of wrapping ribbon all the way around, which I kind of think is a waste since ribbons can be really expensive, I just take two little edges and I take glue dots and glue those edges around. So you still get the wrapped around look, but you don't waste ribbon on the back that no one really looks at. Um, so right now that's just like an old scoring tool that I have that I'm using to take glue dots off because I think the glue dot people found some kind of super glue that they're now using for the glue dots. I, I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but they're super sticky now. I just bought a new pack and they're just, it's crazy how sticky these things are. I can't take it off, they end up stuck to me and, and, um, and so I'm having to use this scoring tool to put it down on paper because you can see it's just, it's just pulling up and it's like this just weird thing now where it's just so sticky that it's hard. I, at least it works really well, but it's really hard to get it off the actual tape now. But um, but it works, so thank you glue dot people. So there's my uh, ribbon. Um, that ribbon was just like by coincidence that I found ribbon that happened to completely match. Um, this is a Fancy Flourishes by Paper Tray Ink. Again, I, as you can tell, I went crazy in the last release and bought um, like three stamp sets. Um, but I'm going to use that big flourish, and I, I'm kind of going to use it um, at, almost to look like it's the leaves coming out of that flower you saw me working on before. Um, so I'm just kind of placing where I think it might look nice, and I'm going to use Versamark ink. Um, I'm using my paper there again to protect my work surface. Um, the reason I'm using Versamark is I don't have spring moss ink, so if you ever want that tone-on-tone, -tone, like monochromatic look, but you don't have it, just stamp in Versamark and let it dry without embossing. And you can get that uh, monochromatic look without having to buy 8 million ink pads. Because um, I knew spring moss might not be one that I would use that often, so I think it's better just to do the Versa mark in this case. Um, and you'll see it looks really nice. Um, and it's really subtle, but it's really pretty. So, And I suggest on these flourishes, make sure you, you press really hard. I probably should have put the foam pad underneath, because it wasn't the most perfect image. Um, so I, don't know, I like that foam pad, I just have to remember to use it. Um, this is a thank you stamp from, I think it's a Technique Tuesday stamp set. And it's kind of scripty looking, so I thought it kind of matched the card. There's my little foam pad. I finally got smart there and decided to use it. Um, and I'm stamping it in Raspberry Fizz ink to match the flower. Um, and so there you go. I'm just, just stamping it normal style there. Um, and, uh, and then right now I'm going to start working on these flowers. So what I'm going to do is actually bend up all these little petals. Um, the base is, is really uh, nice and wide, so I'm able to bend up the petals all the way around. And I'm going to do it to both. I'm going to fast forward because you don't need to see me do that. But I bent up the petals on both flowers, and I'm going to use a pop dot um, to, to adhere the flowers together, and it'll give it some dimension. Because um, if you lay them right flat on each other, the, um, the petals, because they're so fine, they kind of get tangled. So. Um, if you buy this kit and use this flower, I definitely suggest using a pop dot in between them if you want to layer them. Um, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> so right now I'm just, just lining up my flower, putting that pop dot there, and you, as you can see it looks, it looks really pretty. It looks, you know, like one of these embellishments that you could spend five dollars on at a, at a craft store. Um, and you can make them yourself, so I think that's really fun. I'm using my, my super sticky glue dots again. Um, I'm fast forwarding because it took me so long. To, <laughs> to put those glue dots on. So um, I'm just adhering the button with that. I'm not even putting twine through it or anything. I didn't have one that matched, so I just thought it looked fine by itself. It's a really shiny button. It's really pretty. It's the spring moss buttons from Paper Train, so it all matches, which is unlike me to match everything, but uh, but I tried it out for this card. So um, the color challenges make me actually match my stuff, <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, so I'm putting glue dots on the back of that flower. I fast forwarded it again because, once again, it's taking me forever. And I'm just adhering the flower down with the glue dots. Um, I want to make sure I get it right in the right place, kind of a little off kilter, and so that it looks like that flourish is coming straight out of the center of the flower. And with those glue dots, um, it won't be coming off. And right there, we have our final card. Um, and I really like how this one turned out. I think it's it's really classy and elegant, and, and the colors are fun too, so it kind of brings in fun and class. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day.